This week we had a plan, and it was a good plan. We were going to show you around a little bit more of the beautiful island of Butte, and then, as it was Highland Games weekend, we were going to go and check out all the tartan overload. Unfortunately, the Scottish weather gods had other ideas. It is a little bit windy today, as you can probably hear, and uh, the old Argyle is having <laughs> to take it very easy coming in. It's yeah, a bit of a hooli, but it looks like it's going to be quite flat for our crossing, I hope. So we arrived at Weems Bay Ferry Terminal, just ahead of what was forecast to be some rather unpleasant Scottish weather. But we weren't going to let that put us off, and neither were any of the other people in the queue waiting to get across the Butte for the Highland Games. Well, apart from Bex. Bex was doing what she usually does when she's got nothing better to do with her time. She was sitting crocheting. Come on then, hold it up and let's see it. I'm not, it's not ready for that yet. No, oh, I've, I've put pressure pressuring you, am I? Yeah, I've made a mistake now. No pressure. It's Mute Highland Games tomorrow, and there's a little doggy in the window of the uh, toilet delivery van, so <laughs> possibly be visiting those again tomorrow. Is it ready for uh, public display yet? Not yet. Oh, come on, hurry up, look. It's got to be ready. The boat's here. What do you mean this might not work? It's it going might, to be perfect. It might not be ready yet. It no. needs to be. In I'm just hassling you and pressuring you. Ta da! How <laughs> cool! Is that? That is a crocheted wind spinner. She was a clever girly with a crocheted wind spinner and her crochet jumper and her uh, massive bag of wool and, uh, and Eldritch. Have you met Eldritch yet? A lot of our videos these days seem to be us getting on to or off boats. That's because we have lots of adventures. That's because we have lots of adventures. It is uh, pitching up and down a little bit. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. It makes it all the more uh, exciting. This is uh, this is always my favourite bit. Right, we are on the Argyle and we are heading for... Clang, crunch. And so begins the amazing game of Jenga that these crew do with vehicles, trying to get as many squeezed on as they possibly can. It can't be very easy with a massive thing like that pool lorry showing up. Let's go for a cup of, uh, cup of coffee perhaps, Bex? Yep, cup of coffee. Coffee cabin. As soon as you get on a ferry, it feels like you're on holiday. And because we're on our holidays, it's uh, a wee treat, but uh, I'd like to point out <laughs> alcohol free. Not alcohol free, because I don't have to drive. And I've been at work today, you've not. I've actually spent most of this morning packaging and sending off Etsy orders, so thanks to everybody who's ordered stuff. And uh, if you order anything today, you're not getting it until sometime next week. Judging by the speed that the captain whipped the bow round to point towards Rothsey, he was in a bit of a hurry, maybe he was trying to race the rain to the island of Butte. Well, guess what, you can't race Scottish rain because this was about half an hour later. We'd done a few miles across to Butte and yeah, the heavens opened. It was all just a little bit soggy. Still, didn't affect us because we were not planning on anything exciting tonight. What we're going to do is get off the boat, we're going to drive down to a place called Port Barentine and that is where we're going to park for the night because we know there's a really nice little pub there. Port Barentine is about five kilometres round the coast from the main town of Rothsey and it's a really, really nice wee place. The pub that we're talking about is called the Anchor Tavern and it's owned and operated by the local community and it's very, very popular. You always get a really strange mix of uh, tourists, locals and the yachting set who've come in on their yacht to visit the really quite famous marina here, which is uh, always quite good. If you go and check out our Tartan Overload video, you'll be able to see exactly what the Butte Highland Games are made of. There's lots and lots of pipers, lots and lots of uh, activities and sports like tossing the cable and putting the shot and stuff. And also a 10k run that we take part in. And this is what it all looked like last year. The place was beautiful, the weather could really not have been better whilst the actual event was on. Unfortunately, this year it looked a bit more like this. We've never had a total washout when we've been out filming for you guys, but this was a first. I couldn't even take the camera out of the bag, it was just absolutely soaking. So after we'd done our run, which was extremely wet, we went and took cover in the Electric Bakery, which is a really nice wee cafe on Rothsey High Street, and waited for the rain to stop. And fortunately, eventually, the rain did stop, and by sheer coincidence it stopped just in time to coincide with the departure of our old friend, the paddle steamer Waverley. Now last year was the first time I'd ever seen this, and I didn't have time to get the drone up, and I was panicking, and I forgot to press record, and all sorts of stuff that is uh, very, very amateurish. This year, I knew she was there, I had the drone up, and I remembered to press record, so I got some of the shots that I should have got last year. So with our 10k run done, and the rain finally stopped, it was time to go to a place called Butte Yard, where we could dance the night away. Well, one of us could dance the night away. And can you guess which one of us that was? <laughs> Bex was in a wee element. Butte is such a friendly place, so it's just a group of random people that all got up and danced together, which to be honest took the heat off me because I am, uh, I am not known for my dancing abilities. 
Unfortunately, it all turned a bit sour when this undesirable tried to gatecrash proceedings. Don't know what he thought he was going to get. Maybe he thought there might be some spare chips. The locals' attempts to keep him out of the building weren't entirely successful every time they chased him out. He came wandering back in again. And that was that for this trip. We decided that it wasn't going to stop raining, so we're just going to get the boat back to the mainland. On the ferry back, we were sitting up in the lounge and lots of people were rushing across and looking out the window and going out onto the deck. We couldn't figure out why, because the weather was absolutely horrible, but curiosity got the better of us, and we went over to have a look and saw this. This is, I think, one of Britain's nuclear submarines, one of its deterrents from Gearlock, and it's uh, heading out on patrol. Wouldn't mind being in the submarine, wouldn't like to be in those little boats escorting it. And then it ended on a slightly humorous note when we got off the boat in Weems Bay and found out that we weren't actually in Weems Bay because the ferry had diverted to Gurukh because of the uh, the abysmal weather. I thought this was quite funny. Bex didn't really care. She'd done what she always does. She had uh, reverted to the crocheting. <laughs> there have been a few of these crochet wind spinners made this holiday. Guess what all of our friends are getting for their Christmas? Well, that was a complete washout. Our attempts to do any filming on Butte were uh, completely kiboshed by the weather. So uh, instead, what we've got now is a little explore of some of the Scottish borders. And I think you'll quite like it. We are just south of Edinburgh. It's not exactly an ugly part of the world. That is the backside of the Pentland Hills. And we're heading down the E702, if anybody actually uh, is keeping score. So we are heading down a road called the A702, which is one of the main sort of routes from Edinburgh down to the borders. It goes to a place called Abingdon, which is on the motorway, which is blah, blah, blah. You don't care. And I'm going to show you something that you might not believe. But you know how London is quite big and New York is quite big and Montreal is quite big? Well, there's a place in Scotland that is bigger. It's difficult to express just how different the weather is now to how it was earlier and particularly how it was yesterday on Butte. This is, uh, this is quite nice. As you can see, we have some what might be blue sky up there and the uh, rolling green hills. This is the Scottish borders and they are, as I may have mentioned, quite nice. And the clanking noise you can hear in the background is uh, the medals that we won on Butte for running in the extremely wet weather. This is the little village of Carlops. We're not stopping here because there are villages that are prettier, there are villages that are more interesting and bigger. Our next port of call is the pretty little village of West Linton. This part of the world has got lots and lots of pretty little villages, but guess what? It started raining again. <laughs> I think we'll just be jacking it in and hibernating until uh, until Scotland's summer next year, which is about two days in June, I think. De Niro is getting used to short walks in the rain. He wants to go zooming, but obviously you can't do that here. And uh, on Butte, it was just too miserable. So uh, no zoomies this week, I don't think. Oh, look, there's a nice wee church. Who knew that was there? Well, you all did if you watched our video from a few weeks ago when we went down to Moffat. Uh, nice graveyard, very, very interesting that one, but uh, not today because it's a bit soggy and you've seen a bit of it not that long ago. We don't want to start repeating ourselves. Never noticed this before when I've been passing through. That is the town's old war memorial, unsurprisingly, with 1914-18 uh, at the top and 1939-45 at the bottom. And some pretty flowers and a greyhound who better not do anything embarrassing uh, on that bit of grass. And just to prove the old adage, if you don't like the weather in Scotland, give it five minutes, it'll change. It's now, uh, it's now not raining. That building over there is the old toll house. Uh, back in the olden days, this was the turnpike road from Moffat to Edinburgh, and that house charged tolls for anybody using the road. Or rather, it was a toll keeper's house, you know what I mean? The man that lived in there collected tolls from people using the turnpike from Moffat to Edinburgh, delivering uh, sheep up the way and cloth down the way, mostly, I imagine. It would have been a wee hive of activity when the Drover's Road went through here. Drover's Roads are where they moved livestock from one place to another, and this was big textile country down this way, so uh, lots of sheep, lots of cattle, lots of, uh, lots of industry and lots of money for the locals. It was quite a prosperous wee village. And De Niro isn't interested in any of that because he just saw what he thinks might have been a squirrel over there. Some nice, slightly bigger houses up there as well. We're going to go now and look at the sort of heart of the village, which is really, really nice. Very picturesque. Oh, that's pretty cool. I saw the fruit trees in there didn't twig. It was actually a little orchard. That is the West Linton Community Orchard where you can go and you can uh, pick yourself some fruit and leave a wee donation in their box. So you've got a pretty village green and a pretty village church and going through it, you've got a pretty little river. This place really is uh, a bit on the picture postcard perfect side. So that's a little footbridge that we just came across. If you want to get across here in a motor car, it's, uh, it's slightly more interesting because <laughs> it is a fort. There's a ramp down there and then there's the river and then there's a ramp out here. So you're hoping that the river is not too deep or you might end up uh, down there somewhere. 
This is another one of these places that I've been to a lot and never really looked in detail till I'm down here with you guys, so uh, thanks for that. I'm having a proper look round West Linton for the first time, uh, possibly ever. The Nero is doing lots and lots of sniffing. I wonder what he can uh, what he can track down here. That is the town's old clock tower, obviously, and that dates to the 17th century, apparently. If you're wondering how I know that, I am reading it on that sign. I saw this thing on the wall, thought it might have been a grave slab, carved in 1660 by James Gifford. Stonemason, sculptor and portioner of West Linton. A portioner being somebody that farmed a portion of land. And this wee square is opposite it. This place is just so pretty. It's a place lots and lots of people drive past on the A702, but not many people actually stop and it is well worth a wee look. That is another old church that is now apparently a house. It says church house there, but I read that on the sign. That is, uh, that's another old church. You could have probably guessed that from the bell tower and stuff to be fair. And I think that was a great example of walking round in a circle, because I think we're back at that wee bridge that we came across. Yeah, you might think I've got no sense of direction, and you'd, you'd probably be right. But as it says, on the back of Daisy, we're not lost, we're exploring. Lots of pretty little lanes and alleys and ginnels and all sorts. It's, uh, yeah, it's nice. An old second-hand bookshop, and uh, more of the historic heart of the village up there. Let's go down this way, because it's got a pavement, and greyhounds are not very good at not walking on the road. There we go, good boy. So that's West Linton, did you like it? No, not really, too small. Do you want bigger? Yeah, okay, I'm doing that joke to death. If you remember back to about, oh, about five minutes ago in your case, with the drone footage of the Waverley, what I have done is I've got some photographs as well that I took with the little drone that are put up on our Kofi page. So if you like your own pictures of the Waverley, you can go to our Kofi page and you can have them for nothing. They are uh, free, or if you want to leave a wee donation, that'd be lovely, but you don't have to. So if you want some Waverley pictures and lots of other pictures from our adventures, they are up on our Kofi page. Heading along a road that I don't think I've been on before as far as I can remember, heading towards um, somewhere that is bigger. I saw a sign that made me stop, so let's go uh, Let's go for a wee, a very quick look. Don't worry, it's not going to be long in a graveyard. Not yet, anyway. The old graveyard is the one back there in the town. I'm guessing this is going to be 1940s, Second World War. Oh, let's find out. Let's go and ask uh, Sergeant W.W. W. Russell, wireless operator, air gunner. Yeah. 31st of March, 1943, aged 22. Right, and it's uh, War Graves, I wonder if there's any more. Let's, uh, let's go and see what we can see. Another nice, peaceful wee place, apart from me walking about, talking to myself. And there's another War Grave over there, so uh, let's have a little walk over to this one. Now, it's got two badges at the top instead of the usual one. That's uh, not completely unheard of, but quite unusual. It's, uh, I think it's got... Uh, uh, I don't know who, I, that's, that's got a stag on it and that's got a gun on it, so uh, Second Lieutenant SC Watt, 100th Anti-Tank Regiment, Royal Artillery, ah, and 8th Battalion, the Gordon Highlanders. So that'll be the anti-tank one with the gun, and that'll be the, the Highlanders with the stag, I'm guessing, from uh, 1942. A proud memory accidentally killed whilst on active service. That's, uh, that's quite nice, that's got a little bit of history about it, that one. Right, that's enough of that, let's, uh, let's keep heading on down this road. I know I say this quite a lot, but people always automatically head straight for the highlands of Scotland, bypassing the borders completely. The borders has got quite a lot of really cool things to see. I would I would recommend you stop off here. It's a lot closer and we've got less midges. No, I didn't say no midges, I just said um, <laughs> not quite as many. And while we are uh, exploring together, that down there is the village of Blythe Bridge, another very pretty little borders village. But this thing here, I have driven past I don't know how many thousand times and never been able to stop because there's nowhere to park. So today I've just uh, abandoned Daisy there. Let's go for a wee look. I'm guessing it's probably a war memorial. I've always assumed that, but uh, yeah, I never know. It is a war memorial, but it's like a private one. It's, uh, it's nice and pointy and it's got a cross up there on the top. And on the big stone it says, through distant ages, sire to son shall tell the tale of freedom won. That's uh, definitely worth finally stopping for. No Second World War stuff on that at all. So it's all uh, gentlemen of the First World War. The glory of God and blah blah blah, 1914-19. But this uh, Alexander David Gibson Carmichael was a Royal Navy sub-lieutenant. Sub-lieutenant? <laughs> yes, I know. It's a sub-lieutenant in a submarine. It's, I know it's not the same thing, but anyway. He was lost in a submarine in 1916, back very, very early days of the technology. I mean, that was a bit scary. There's a guy who died at Gallipoli with the Australians and the New Zealanders of the Anzac Corps. And there's, uh, oh wow, there's Archibald Buchan Miller, who was a lieutenant in the King's Own Scottish Borders, attacked the RAF and killed over Shelleville in Belgium. 
in 1917. Again, very early days of the technology. I don't think I would much fancy being in a First World War aeroplane or a First World War submarine. They both sound a bit scary. It's quite interesting that, isn't it? That uh, submarines and aeroplanes are technologies that were sort of brand new in the First World War and we're still using them to kill each other today. Let's go down here, but I can't promise you any actual dolphins. But as we are not living the sky life, that's probably as close as we're going to get. I bet that Sub Lieutenant submarine is a little bit different technology to that thing that you saw earlier coming out of Butte. And we are now in Dolphinton, so if you want to see any dolphins, now is the best chance that you're going to get. I say best chance, it's also no chance, but, uh, but hey ho. This road is also one of those annoying ones that you get lots and lots of lorries using rather than going on the motorway, so there's always the fear that somebody has got impact patient and tries to overtake coming the other way. It's happened a couple of times, a couple of close calls over the years. But then again, I drive Daisy, so I can't exactly be impatient. She's not a racing car, and as my dad used to always say, better being five minutes later down here than 30 years early up there. And for anybody that's not noticed all the bigger references, we are in bigger. As you can see there, it's a historic borough from 1451 and it's got uh, it's got all that stuff there. We'll go and have a look at some of that. And as we were stopping in Bigger, it'd be rude not to go and visit one of our favourite chip shops in the whole of Scotland. This is the Townhead Cafe. We've been coming here for years and years. It's really cool and we always have exactly the same thing. Who says that Scotland doesn't have world-class cuisine and uh, very high rates of heart disease? We are Scotland on a shoestring and that is Scottish delicacies in a nutshell. <laughs> Smoked sausage supper and a can of iron brew. You can't beat it. That was very tasty. It is a good chip shop, that one over there. Let's go and have a wee look around it bigger. That's the wee museum that I've never been into that replaced one that used to be here that was so cool. Every school child in the local area knew about it because it had an old Victorian street and you got taken down there with your school in the bus from Edinburgh in my case and you got to go and visit this real old Victorian street and you wonder why I'm interested in history. Eh? Bigger is a traditional old market town where there used to be livestock markets and stuff. It occurs to me I've never seen a market cross here. We'll have to go and see what we can see. They didn't all survive obviously but there's usually some trace of them left. And there's also a charity shop but it's not a very big one so I'll go for a wee look and if there's anything worth showing you I will uh, I will show you obviously. London's big but bigger is bigger. Told you. I'm going to take you down and show you another museum, well the outside of it anyway, that's supposed to be quite interesting, but uh, in all honesty I have never been. I'm not sure why they've got what appears to be the front end of a snowplough, uh, let's go for a wee look, oh there's a sign, it is, oh, it is, it is actually the front end of a snowplough. Alright, and the guy who did this is born in 1907 and he did work in Canada on the DEW line, no idea. The dual line defence system? I'll have to find out. Although actually I'm sure one of you clever people can find out and let us know in the comments. Oh, that's pretty good. We like a puffin, as you probably noticed. It is a photogenic wee place and it only gets prettier the further down this hill you get. I don't know if that house has just sunk into the ground or if the door's always been at that height. You couldn't ask the person that built that house for money because he was always a bit short. All these gems and becks isn't here to enjoy them, or suffer them, one of the two. Obviously it's got a war memorial, but we're not here to see Bigger's war memorial. We're here if we look down here, which is, uh, which is quite pretty, because in the middle of the town they've got this river that goes through it, and this really, really cute little humpback bridge, and then up that way there is the museum I was talking about. That's the wee footbridge. I'm guessing this used to be a Ford, but I wouldn't try it now because it's got a big drop and, uh, and bollards. Maybe they couldn't afford a bigger bridge. But that's two in a row. I better stop now by getting ahead of myself. We will have to come and show you the inside of that building and I'll have to see it myself because, like I said, I've never been. But that is bigger gasworks museum that, to be fair, looks a bit closed. Let's go and have a look at the sign. Ah, yeah, it's only open Saturdays and Sundays, April to September, so uh, can you see anything interesting over there? Because, uh, no, there's a big gas tank. I think that is about it. Oh well, there you go. It's uh, quite interesting, I guess, I imagine. I don't know. And if that isn't uh, enough certainty in fact for you, I don't know what is. And yet another nice wee park. These towns are all, uh, as I said before, well worth a visit. You really should if you get the chance. If you're ever here in a camper van, there's quite a nice campsite as well. It's down the bottom of the hill. Although, to be fair, we don't usually use proper campsites. We use an app called Park Fortnite that's never let us down yet, even like in the middle of London or the middle of Manchester or anywhere. It always finds you somewhere you can park up, and we've never been hassled yet. There's a shop that definitely knows its target market. New summer clothes and chocolate. There's the summer clothes. Where is the chocolate? 
and with a last wee look at Bigger for now, I think we'll definitely be back. We are heading to a wee church that is quite famous and very old. Well, you didn't think I was going to let you off with churches and graveyards completely, did you? Well, there are some big shows in the world, but there's also a bigger show, and that's uh, <laughs> that's been it's actually quite good fun. That there's lots and lots of agricultural stuff. Uh, maybe take you there next year. It is uh, it's quite in I find it quite interesting. You may not, unless you like sheep, in which case it is absolutely fascinating. So that is Coulter Kirk behind me. It's 13th century. is the oldest bits, but it's mostly been rebuilt in 1910. And I've got this big grin because uh, I just met some nice Canadians who are uh, who are fans of the channel. And they saw the <laughs> they saw the signs on the back of Daisy and did an emergency stop. I do hope they're enjoying their uh, enjoying their visit to Scotland, and I also hope they realise how much they have made my day. Even if it did say first question, have you got De Niro with you? Not Bex, not me, De Niro. <laughs> we know who the star of the show is. What do you reckon? We zap with the drone because it's not raining. I think uh, I think we'll give that a go. De Niro is back in Daisy, having uh, having met his fans. He's done his meet and greet, and now he's going for a sleep like a like a celebrity. Lots and lots of old gravestones, but I was just wondering what this was. This is built onto the edge of the church. Uh, the dust shall return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So what's uh, what's in there? All right, there's uh, there's some things set into the walls. No doubt the great and the good of the local area. There is a Commonwealth War Graves sign on the gate, but uh, I've actually not got to spend too long looking for that because I think, uh, obviously, never want to have too many graveyards in the one episode because that is what Places for the Past is for. There are lots of these really, really old stones that are quite hard to read. This one says, Here lies Alex Alexander and Anne Mel Melross. Children to Joe's something, 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 something. Ah, oh, this one is quite cool, mostly because I can actually read it. It says, Here lies L Y E S John Giddis, brother, and then it's got in, right? Brother in, but there's no gap there. Brother in law to Alexander Welch. Uh, in Nisbet who died 17th of March, oh, 1711, I think, his age, gone. I can't see that. Something years. 76 years or 16 years, not sure. But anyway, it's got the old skull, crossbones and hourglass. Your time is running out, so use it wisely. Such a cool wee building. If I've ever been anywhere that feels slightly haunted, I think this is it. It is such an amazing wee place. It's uh, lots and lots of trees growing around the edges and sometimes in the middle and lots and lots of very well kept grass. The whole place is very well looked after. Although there are lots and lots of trees and things growing from the top of that, uh, that tower over there. So that bit over there is all too old for Commonwealth war graves. You don't get them from the Napoleonic Wars, so it must be in this bit, which is uh, is a bit newer. But I'm not quite sure how much newer. 1997 or oh, 2015? That's uh, that's very. Oh, there it is over there. Let's go and see who we are saying hello to this time. Well, this is quite interesting for a given value of interesting. But he was Sergeant H. B. Burnett, a wireless operator, air gunner, who died in 1942. And I'm guessing that might have been his father was H.B. Burnett as well, who died February 1949. Next stop as our journey approaches its end is a rather pretty bridge over a river. Now, does anybody know what river that is? Uh, I'll give you a clue. It looks nothing like that uh, anywhere else that you might see it further down. And it's also possibly Scotland's most famous. That is the River Clyde, which uh, starts off in the hills away over there and ends up down in Glasgow. That's quite a nice view there. That is obviously the old sort of humpback bridge, which is uh, no longer used apart from for dog walking. And that is the big, shiny, uh, slightly newer bridge or much newer bridge. It's, uh, I'm, I'm gibbering, sorry. It's a man down there in a wetsuit. I'm not quite sure what he's, what he's doing. <laughs> Not the sort of place you get much in the way of uh, sub-aqua. I've never been down this wee bit of road before. I've stopped at the top of the dog a few times, but I've never walked down it. You do get a nice view of the bridges from here, so uh, I will show you that. How about that? Do you want to see some bridges? Well, you've got no choice. If you don't want to see bridges, shut your eyes now. Okay, keep your eyes shut if you don't want to see the bridges. There's a pretty old bridge and a more modern bridge, so uh, if you don't want to see them, keep your eyes shut. And you can open your eye again. No more bridges. I lied. I'd like to apologise to anybody who's got a bridge phobia. That was that was irresponsible of me. De Niro is quite keen on going up this path. I've got uh, no idea where it goes. I don't imagine it goes anywhere apart from back up onto the main road. But uh, hey ho, he's in charge. 
Yeah, De Niro, that just goes up onto the road. It's not, uh, it's not very exciting. Come on. <laughs> What's up there that you're so keen to see? And for this little road trip, this is Journey's End. This is where the A702 joins the M74 motorway, and this is where De Niro and I take a left, and we're heading for Manchester. That's it for this week's episode of Scotland on a shoestring. We do hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, please remember to like and subscribe and all that gubbins, and we'll see you next week for more, hopefully with better weather. <laughs>